What's going on everybody? Dan with Right Now Powder Coating here and in today's video I'm going to put together the Bear Kit from Electron. We've sold a bunch of these kits and I get a lot of questions about the air setup, where to put the air for their hoppers and all that. So I wanted to clear it all up on this video um, and hopefully this will help some of you guys who are buying this unit and putting it together. All right, when you open up your box, it's gonna look a lot like this. You're gonna have a manual. This is the Pro V2 kit, because I don't have the master. The only difference is gonna be the control unit's different. Um, on the master, it looks like this. Um, and then the gun's gonna be different. Um, the gun on the master, which this is not the correct gun for it, but it's just sitting here, has buttons on here. This one does not, so you can't do any of the controls from here. This is a Pro V2 gun. So. Your box is gonna have your pump in it, your manual, all your hosing tubes, which can all be cut down to size. You're gonna have your gun. You're gonna have um, I think this is all the fittings and stuff. So you've got your fittings, power cord, ground cord. Um, there will actually be a regulator in this box. Um, I had to order them separate because for some reason we didn't get them on these. That's why I still have them. And then your control unit. Okay, so this is the last part you're going to have in there. So this is your main air coming in. This is going to go to the back of the control unit. And that controls all the air to the pump and everything. And then this controls the air to your fluidizer, which then comes out of here. And this plugs in, so that should control your air when you pull the trigger. So we're going to set all this up and see how it works, because I've had some complaints that the air never stops, or that we're blowing apart hoppers because we have too much air. Um, these green dots here are the arrows. You're supposed to, that's a factory suggestion of where you need to set your air up to. I would suggest doing that and then adjusting accordingly. So the easiest part, we're gonna plug in the cord. It only goes in one way. Push it in, screw in the back. Pretty self-explanatory here. Next, pretty simple, your ground cord goes on the back of the unit. This is not to ground your parts, this is to protect the unit. Put that clamp on. If your booth is grounded, that's probably okay, but if you can get this straight to a ground rod, just put it on there. It'll keep your unit safe. It'll make sure that you don't have anything come back and affect it. All right, next we've got this black line. This is actually your um, nozzle rinse air. So down here where it shows the air coming out of the nozzle, this just goes into here. And then it's going to go into the back or the bottom side of your gun. Again, straightforward. Blue line goes in there. Your red line will go in there. Now your air regulator and module will go into your aux. These again can only go in one way. You can see the pin there. It goes right there. And then just make sure it's all the way in and then screw it tight. And last you've got your gun. It's going to go on here again. It's got a pin in it. It will only go on one way. Push it in all the way, tighten it down. Now you just have a big cluster of hoses and cords and everything. This is pretty basic. Um, your main air is going to come down to your regulator and go in there. Um, with the master guns, the hose is already connected. With these, you're probably going to have to cut some hose and use it. I believe they are the same eight as your red and your blue. You're not going to need all this depending upon how you have your pump set up. So I'm just going to cut a little bit off and actually I have scrap. So we'll just use some of our scrap. We're going to push it in there and then we're going to push it in to there. Down at the bottom here. And these guns all come with this fitting. I'm guessing none of you guys use this fitting. Take it out, put whatever fitting in that your whole shop is aired or set up with. And that's really the only thing you should have to add to the system to get it running. Okay, in the little spares bag, you've got your quick connects. That's for your red and black or blue hoses. You've got some spare parts here. 
This is if you want to do like a hardwired. We don't use this or the clamp. This is an extra injector, two extra filters that go in your pump. And then this can go on the tip of the gun and you can twist it to close the mouth so there's not as wide of a spray, which is kind of nice. And then there's a couple fuses in there in case you blow a fuse. We haven't had any issues with that, but it's nice to have those so that you're not down just for a fuse issue. Then you have some hose ties, which I just toss to the side. Um, use them to hang up like cords in your office, but they tend to slide on these hoses. It's better to use electrical tape when you're wrapping everything up. All right, when you're putting these on, you're gonna take it apart. So I unscrewed this piece and you're gonna slide this part onto the hose. Once you have that slid back, and it's not a bad idea to cut that straight if it's not cut straight. Sometimes it's got some bends in it or something and you can't get that on. It's a very tight fit. So if it's not, just cut it straight and put it on. Then you're gonna jam this little guy into here and then we're gonna tighten them up. So make sure you've got that tube flush against there and then bring this up and you really can just hand tighten it. If you wanna put a wrench on each side, just don't overdo it. You don't want to ruin anything. And these hold pretty good, just hand tight. So that's what it should look like when you're all done. And then repeat for the red line. So then we've got our pump here, and this is pretty basic. You're going to put the red line on the red line, blue line on the blue line. And that's it for the pump. So the only thing you got to do is add on your uh, powder hose, which we've got right here. You're going to put this on here. And way back there on the floor, I drug the whole line out, is the gun. You're going to stick that onto the bottom of the gun, hook up your black line to the gun too, and you're done. So the one thing I do want to mention is this black line for your gun to do the rinse air is the exact same as a black line that you run to your hopper. Um, for whatever reason, they do not send this bear kit with enough to do both unless you want a short hose, because you could cut this down if you wanted, but you're going to change the length of where you can drag your gun to. Um, so if you want to ahead of time, you can buy five millimeter black, whatever color tube. It doesn't really matter, but it's five millimeter um, and it should just punch in there and then you can put your hopper wherever you want. If you only need a couple feet cause you're setting it up on a cart or something, then just do a couple feet. But um, from what I was explained, they don't know how far, so they don't send this line to, for the main air and they don't send this line for your hopper air because they don't know how you're gonna set it up is, is what I was told. <laughs> so that's just what I'm going off of. Um, so make sure you, if you want more of the five millimeter or what was this? Eight, the eight millimeter, just buy some extra off Amazon or somewhere and you should have what you need to, some people set these up on a shelf, some set them on a mobile cart. So it all depends on your circumstances and what you wanna do. All right, so we've got our nozzle air in our hand. We're going to bring it back to our gun here. And it just goes right into this push. It's hard to do one-handed, sorry. So you just push it into there. I'm going to go ahead and work my way from the gun all the way back and start tying these two lines together because they are pretty much the same length. But I'm going to start up there. We'll leave any slack right in here between the two. Then we'll add our powder hose and we'll come back and do the same thing with the powder hose, but the powder hose breaks off and goes to your pump, which is not up there yet. Um, it's right there. So um, it, it kind of breaks away from the line. So you'll tie it together for a while and then it'll break off to the other side. All right, so the gun's hanging up there and we've got everything tied together for the gun now. It comes into the hopper right here. Obviously I've got tension on it, so it keeps wanting to pull the hopper over, but once I get the gun off, it should be fine. Now all I have to do is uh, switch out my air inlet so I can hook up to my shop air and then we'll fire this thing up and we'll see without powder what our fluidizer air feels like, how much air we're getting through the top lines and that sort of thing because I think that's where they're having problems blowing this thing apart. There is a relief filter here that goes through and it should be letting the powder out enough. If it's not, we may have to take this out, either change it or f figure out a different way to evacuate that pressure. Um, I know with the big hoppers, they actually just have a tube that they run into their powder booth and they just, whatever powder comes out, it comes out it. We may have to try something like that. I've never actually used this exact one, but I've used a very, very similar one that had a few changes done to it. So we'll see if it works or not. 
All right, so ignore the cluster that is this arrangement. Um, I hope you guys would be a little more organized than I am. Again, this is just for a test. I don't plan on using this unit, um, but we've had a lot of people buy them and a lot of questions and concerns about how it's set up. So again, we've got our pressure, or we changed out our fitting, our quick air connect to match our hose. Now our supply of air is, high it's building up right now we have a rotary air compressor that feeds into our old piston air compressor tank um, which is now at about 120 i think it goes to like 140 or 50 on there so we have somewhere in that general area of, of uh, air coming to this but it doesn't really matter as long as you can get your air settings into these green dots so we're a little bit high right now you just pop up on this we're going to bring it down because i want it where they recommend pop down on this bring it down now this module here that screws into the ox on the back side of your gun should control your trigger so when you pull your trigger it should then open up that valve which lets the air go down to your fluidizer because that's where your fluidizer air comes out of right here so this should open the valve let the air through when you pull your trigger now this is the pro v2 which is a little bit different than the master they both have this power on button the first time i've ever turned this unit on we've got our power cord in our ground the ground is going to the booth which is ground and then we just have that plugged in so it is aired up. I've got a little bit of a leak here because I didn't wrap it, um, but I don't hear any other leaks. Everything else sounds good. Now, there's a membrane at the bottom of this fluidizer and that's what the air goes into, which slows it down so it can come up. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just pull the trigger real quick on the gun. And you see how that you're nozzles all go up here it's going to be very similar on the master the only difference is you're going to have preset numbers so um and these on the pro v2 it's a little bit harder to understand where you're at on there this is in bars so um when you pull that we're at a just under a two bar on our um total air and then we're at just over one bar on our supplemental air. Now this button, yep, see that's what the guy's having a problem with. So he, if you turn this button on, it's putting so much air into there, it's popping the lid off, which is what I've got to figure out. Oh. So I can feel the air coming out of there right now with that button pushed on. Turn that off and it's off. All right, so, so right now we've got our air settings about where they're supposed to be. This one dropped a little. This one I've got down below the point two because when I had it at point two and I turned on the supplemental air to the um, fluidizing plate, it's wanting to pop this lid off because it's got this little filter here and I can feel air coming out but it doesn't let a lot out. So you don't want to put more air in than this can let out or it will boom on you. So you've got to make your adjustments here and you can probably hear it getting quieter. Okay, now if I crank this thing up, it's gonna get louder and you're probably gonna lose your lid. There it goes. So see how it popped the lid there? That's because there's too much pressure. So you gotta get this baby cranked down to where it's a happy medium. Now this is without powder. So what we've gotta do now is I'm gonna put a little bit of powder into this hopper so that we can see what you're looking for when you're setting your air settings. Cause you just kinda want it to simmer. You don't want it to be boiling and you don't want it to just be like vibrating. So you'll kinda see what I'm saying. The other thing um, about this is you can't fill it all the way full or you will blow it apart or powder will start coming out. You kind of want it in that 75-ish range. All right, guys, so we have everything set up. We got some powder in the hopper 
And this is a Pro V2, so it's a little bit different, but there's this power button here and we have to turn this on to get the air flowing. I have my air going to the hopper at zero. We're gonna slowly crank this up until it starts giving us a little bit of a boil, and I mean slowly. And these smaller hoppers don't take a lot of air, so this recommended setting is too high. That might be more for like a 50 liter hopper where you have a lot more volume needed. So, oh. I barely got any air coming to it and she's already going. So I'm gonna get the lid on it. You can kind of see it going through the side there. Um, it's going to have some powder come out because you're kind of boiling it in there. Obviously the pressure is gonna put up. You're gonna have this filter that's letting a little out too. You want these in your paint booth because it's just the way they work. Even your big ones have hoses that let powder out. You have to get rid of that extra pressure. Now, I've already set my settings on here, which you can't see on your masters. They're already preset 40, 30, or whatever you've got them at. And it's got a nice, decent little boil in there, which is really hard to see now, but I can see the powder coming up out of the top. We're gonna spray, and I don't have my booth on, so we're not gonna spray long, but there you go. So there it's spraying nice and pretty. So that is it for these bare units. Obviously, you're gonna wanna put them somewhere where, I'm gonna turn the air off. Uh, you're gonna wanna put them in a nicer location. You're gonna wanna clean up all these stupid wires. You only need enough to get to your hopper or future hoppers. You can mount all this stuff up on a wall in your booth or next to your booth on a cart. Make it look real nice. Get this thing fixated on the side or something to make it look nice. Um, it works a lot better. So I was not planning on working today. I, it's a Saturday and I was out golfing and then I had to come up here to get my trailer to take my mower home to mow and I have a guy I'm trying to help through these problems and I hope these videos are going to help him and help anyone else who buys one of these bear kits. Now, the bear kits are on sale right now, I think on our website, powderfinishingequipment.com. These little hoppers, if you want one, message me. I'll probably link them in an Amazon link below and I'm gonna link uh, some hoses, those five and eight millimeter hoses so you guys can buy those too if you want one of these little setups. The best thing about these is that you're getting the control unit, you're getting the gun. That's the expensive part. That's a technology that uh, a lot of you guys that are using Cool Code or Eastwood or whatever aren't getting. This gun and unit will allow you to do that. The nice thing is these pumps will transfer right over into a box feed system with a pickup tube. So if you wanna upgrade later, you, we can actually sell you the cart with the pickup tube and you've got a full-fledged deal going. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, um, hit that like button for me. If you have questions, leave them below. I will try to get to as many as I can. We are obviously very busy in here. So I hope this helps some of you guys. Have a good weekend. I'm gonna go edit this and get it up right now. What's going on everybody? Dan with Right Now Powder Coating here and in today's video, this camera's dirty, so we're gonna clean it.